Hey, what up guys? It is Double Shoe again, and welcome to the second ACW Brothers v Brothers preview video. Yes. Uh, I'm out of breath. I don't know why. I ran back here. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Anyways, welcome back. We're going to be taking a look at the artillery this time around, so we're not going to be uh, looking at any special kind of map. In the first preview video, we had a bit of a... Yeah, how should I put it? Uh, unfortunately, the battle... Um, uh, wasn't really um, shown, uh, there wasn't much combat in it, due to the fact that the game crashed. So, you remember this is developer's preview copy, things are really unstable still, they're sorting that out later, you know, when you're developing a game, you focus on certain areas and then you uh, tidy it up, make sure it doesn't crash. So, we're going to be looking at uh, artillery, artillery, artillery in this video, yes, uh, mainly Union artillery. There's no gigantic differences both sides have really got access to most of the same artillery unless there's like a specific battery or sort of a unit um but mostly all of the artillery uh, we'll be having a look at that um perhaps not all of the guns but we're going to see what we can do uh, we are going to take a look at the new 30 pounder parrot uh, we're going to take a look at the uh not the gatling gun this time around we're going to take a look at the uh, 10 pounder, so we'll get a bit of a comparison between 30 and 10 pounder, see the damage difference. Uh, we're going to also take a look at the siege mortar, uh, the cohorn mortar, the 6 pounder, and the 24 pounder howitzer. So we've got two mortars that we'll look at, different. We've got three pounders uh, to look at as well, and then we've got a, a, a howitzer to look at as well. Uh, there we go. The, the enemy will just mainly be garrison infantry marching at us. Uh, state militia and stuff like that. Um, really just big units that I can show. Got plenty of things to shoot at now. Uh, da, 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 da. No, we'll bring in some Slavic volunteers. That's interesting. Confederate Marines. We'll just go with some regular infantry instead. So we've got plenty of infantry to shoot at. Uh, no question about that. Actually, I think I'll match the amount. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Then we've got some regular infantry for the whatever remains. Actually, that should just be about fine. And then we'll have some skirmishers ourselves to just hold them off uh, in the distance. So I'll be looking for skirmishers. So six units of skirmishers as well of different kinds. So yeah, that's what we're going to be looking at this time around, really. Not much else to say. Uh, without Germans, we would have defeated the Yankees a long time ago. Oh. Hmm. Because he's talking about the German regiments and all that. Um, so yeah, artillery and skirmisher preview. I think I'll do like a minor factions preview for the third video. Uh, we're not going to be looking at the campaign just yet. Um, hmm. And yeah, in the first preview video, if you missed that, we were just taking a look at like a siege battle, really. Not much more to it. So this time... Some units are masters Whoa. of... Uh, Shut up. All right, so uh, let's line up the things that we'll be using. Uh, begin kind of shooting here from the left, I guess. Uh, we'll try the first. We'll try a thirty pounder. This battery's a lot bigger. Then we'll try the uh, ten pounder, and then finally we'll try the six pounder. See the big difference between them all. Um, they will all be on hold uh, fire. Then we'll try the mortars, uh, both those guys, to see what they're up for. And then, of course, the howitzer. The howitzer can fire from in between here. That's not a, that's not an issue. That they fire upwards. So we'll look at it that way. Then we've got all the skirmishers here lined out to sort of hold the enemy. So that's going to be very tidy and cool. Let's the start the deployment, in the pause the game, and just have a quick look at the uh, Suavis first. Uh, this is the 8th Massachusetts, 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 yeah, Regiment of Colonel I or L. Salem Suavis. Regiment Company 1st Salem Suavis, I don't know. Um, 
Company K, Irish, Union 6th and 9th at New York. Company K, Irish Suaves. Uh, Union 11th. Sorry, where are they? Yeah, here we go. Union 11th, Indiana Infantry, Wallace Suaves. Very cool. 65th, Illinois, 2nd Scotch Infantry. They're the ones with the Henry rifle, so we'll see them in the action again. First, um, Minnesota, MI. I think that's Minnesota. Mrs. No, yeah, it's Minnesota. MI. MA is Minnesota. Yeah. Sharpshooters Company. Should be Minnesota. 62nd, New York, Anderson, Suaves. And that's about it. Then we've got the general. I'll place them just back here. And we'll take a look. So, 30 pounders. You're going to begin firing. We're going to be taking a look at the regular round shots for you guys. So, we'll aim down the Virginia volunteers there on the left. They start out with uh, 240 men. Take a look at the accuracy and other factors. And fire about two salvos. That was about the first one. No hits yet. Uh, do remember this is a far distance, uh, pretty far away. Other said, not too accurate, but uh, I believe that what these guys pack is the damage of the 30 pounder shots. Some heavy cannons here. Okay, they're gonna fire again pretty soon. We're looking at reload time as well. Seems to be a little lengthy. These guys are gonna get mixed in, so they're probably gonna do some damage to the North Carolina volunteers in case they do hit. That's something you just have to be fine with nowadays. Okay, we're gonna see them fire one more time. Here we go. That hit, and that is a massive damage. If it does hit, it does massive damage. We can hold fire as we go there. They made the North Carolina Volunteers retreat, and they dealt a stinging damage. Uh, we're gonna look at the 10 pounder now. Ten pounders can open fire. And this is a bigger battery, so this might they might deliver more damage. Okay, close, close by. No distinctive hits here. Um, I guess they're trying to, you know, getting targeted in here. And these guys are gonna reload a bit quicker than the thirty pounders. So this is not only a bigger battery, but it should be more rapid as well. Looks like the sharpshooter's opening fire as well, to begin with. That's interesting. They've got a long range. They're going to hold fire for now. And the 10-pounders will fire again. Big battery, but no hits, unfortunately. We'll look at the six pounders, and see what they're up to. They're about equally big in size. Of course, a smaller caliber here, so. We'll see what happens. Perhaps they're more accurate. Yep, definitely. They did hit. Uh, no conclusive Battalion! fact that they are more accurate just because they hit once, but we'll give them a second round uh, as well, and we'll see if they can perform equally good. These guys really need to hold fire. There we go. They're not hitting many, but still. I hit one guy there. It's a long range. So, reload time, they seem to be about the same here as for the 10-pounders. The nope, they're actually way quicker. Excuse me. And... Yeah, definitely more accurate than the other pounders there, but they don't deal as much damage. Um... Let's take a look at the 24-pounder uh, howitzer, seeing as they're starting to come in range for that. This is about at its maximum range for the howitzers. And we're looking at a, a good set of guns here. And they're firing away now. We're going to look at what kind of accuracy and damage we get out of the howitzers. These guys use um, shells that explode in the air and shoot shrapnel down at the enemy. I believe that these... Howitzers are incredibly effective. We can fire some of the North Carolina volunteers as well. They're accurate, and they, ha they, they have this morale impact that the other artillery simply doesn't because of its damage. So howitzers, um, definitely lower range, um, smaller range, should I say. 
so they might not be uh, perfect for every single combat situation, but they're great to have behind infantry, they fire above them, and they're not only accurate, they're very deadly too. But seeing as these guys are running now, there we go. Some shells, depending on the range, explode here, some explode on the ground. Very, very good damage, good reload time as well. Let's have a look at the Siege Mortar. We're fighting at the North Carolina Volunteers there as well. Four man mortar unit here, or four, four cannons, or four guns, or whatever you want to call them. Also have the um, air burst effect there. Okay. Starting to get close now, so we're going to be ready to open up with the skirmish as soon and see if we can hold them back. We're going to fire the cohorn mortar while we're at it. Let's see if there's any major difference there. Definitely a smaller piece. Could they be more accurate? We'll find out. Here goes the cohorn mortar. No distinctive result there. Uh, mortars could be good at more stationary units. But what we're going to do now is have them all fire at will. Uh, and we're going to see what kind of damage all artillery can produce together. Creating a living hell there for the Confederates. Zavis are taking big, a uh, lot of damage back here. Volleys from the uh, Georgia and Virginia volunteers. Very effective, long range. Looks like they're going in for a closer move here. All artillery is pretty much targeting uh, the close by people here. At this range, artillery is definitely more accurate. I'm gonna try the shrapnel shot this time. It will most likely be some sort of bursting round. Like that. Very dangerous. Um, will result in a lot of routing enemies. If you can get a good hit. It seems like it flies over the head of the enemy for most of the time. But that remains to be seen entirely. It's like he gave them order to fire, and that's badass. They return. They're giving a very nasty greeting, though. The shrapnel doesn't seem to be overly effective. If I were to uh, engage in a, in a fight like this, I would resort to using the round shot. The canister shot, obviously, very close. Uh, for the mortars, though, let's have a look at the explosive shells. Let's find a stationary unit at a medium range and give them a shot here. These are the explosive shells we're using now. Perhaps they hadn't reloaded them. There we go. That's one of the explosive shells. They land and then they blow up. Off in the air up there as well. That's very interesting. Lower quality infantry, mate. Looks like the flank fell. Oh, apparently not. seem to get any decisive information out of these shots. Here we go. Hope they don't explode in there. They're very tiny. They do explode in there. Um, that's why I haven't seen most of them. I believe some of them do land. I think it's, um, it's almost up to chance. That one landed. It depends on the gun as well. 
up a sort of round shot for these guys. Uh, Altus will target the guys on the left flank there. The right flank, let's see if we can route the army with effective artillery fire here. Would be incredibly interesting to find out. Howitzers and mortars will focus on the Georgia volunteers. These will take on each unit there, and the parrots will actually fire straight ahead, right into the Virginia volunteers in front. These guys can use the percussive shells, unlike the smaller, uh, smaller pieces. So we'll have a look at the percussive shells as well. Takes a long time reloading. These guns are effective. Very big. We're going to see the percussive shell in action now. If they manage to score a hit. From the ID will fire in position. Pass Not entirely reloaded yet. This gun is ready. Others remain to still be reloaded. Doesn't seem overly effective. This gun takes a long time reloading. Here we go. That's a hit. Not a hit, but that's the, that's the shell there. Can't see any decisive. That must have been one of those uh, percussive shells as well. Very interesting. We'll resort to round shot here as well. As we routed the Georgia volunteers back there. They took a lot of hits. Mortars and howitzers. I think it's a very deadly combo. These guys have actually not been firing. You'll have to excuse me. Hope the sharpshooters return fire again what kind of damage they can do up close after a volley. Decent, not decisive. Okay, where are my second scotch? They just fell back. And then their Henry rifles. I think they did deliver a lot of damage there. Most of this is artillery fire, as you can tell. A lot of gun casualties. Flanks seem to, to start failing now. If can buy the artillery a bit of time, I think it'll be almost fine. So, um, howitzers seem to be my favorite this time around. We'll see what kind of unit does what. Just a look at the new unit cards. Bolt shell, case shot, they can fire. Very nice indeed. Shell is interesting. Here's the difference. Armaments. This is incredibly good. Uh, cannot in ignore these uh, unit cards. Very interesting indeed. I don't know if that's range. It's range action. Uh, very interesting indeed. Officers oh, weapons. Very cool indeed, needing the cards. You guys are routed entirely. Let's resort to the canister. Nope, not yet. Uh, the counter gun will use the shrapnel shot. Whoa. I'm interested in seeing if they can actually turn out to work a bit differently. 
Okay, these guys are definitely in kind of shrapnel uh, range now. That's why we're using it. Some of the explosives. Quite effective if they explode. That was, fine. that was nice. That was a very good hit. That's that's it you gotta take credit for. You can score one of those, it's field promotion right there. Wow. Kinda of bouncing, the shrapnel doesn't seem to hit that well. Right. They still return. I think I just want to finish this so I can get a good, Most get a good look at what. Um, with skirmish. Good look at what we can. What kind of units did what damage here? So all these guns have pretty much been firing at will for the last set of time. Spare one cannon to shoot at the broken unit. They might actually return, unlike the shattered ones. No, but they're coming back. This unit is about to run any time now. But give the artillery just a kind of a go at them and see them run. tactics in the field, so. Very interesting. Good smokes here. Good smoke effects, definitely. Very cool looking. Not giving these guys a break here. Boom. Broken. Born. I believe these guys will not return. No, they are indeed shattered. These are two. These are not. And they are not. We're hoping we can perhaps rouse these guys before they decide to resort to the gun again. So yeah, our accuracy, I mean there's their big units, do a lot of damage, but I don't I think the accuracy is is good enough to make sure that the battle doesn't end. I mean, point blank like that, boom, our all artillery is just overpowered accurate. I think that was a good display there of Union Firepower. We're gonna end the battle here. We're gonna have a look at the unit statistics. So, okay, who lost the most men? Uh, of course the Suavis. Um, when it came to the kills of the Suavi units here, the the, the last two obviously, the ones who stand, stood the longest, uh, didn't really take the most casualties, but they also killed the most. Um, unlike most of these sharpshooter units who are fairly ineffective. Uh, when it comes to the artillery, the howitzer just has that upper edge with the kills there. Um, about as many guns as the 6-pounder and 10-pounder below them, but definitely the most kills there. 10-pounder and 6-pounder about the same. I believe the 6-pounder hit more than the 10-pounder, hence why they killed more, although I believe the 10-pounder does more damage. Mortar-wise, uh the Cohorn, way more accurate than Union Siege Mortar. And the Parrot Rifle, uh, being f fewer guns, did fairly well. If we doubled the guns, guns there, we could look at a, at a kill score about the, the 10 pounders had as well. But yeah, that's interesting. I hope you guys enjoy that little preview, and I will see you guys soon again. Ciao.